According to Bloomberg, Chinese President Xi Jinping used a speech remembering Mao Zedong to push a framework the current leader rolled out recently to counter the West's capitalist model. The central task of the nation and its ruling Communist Party is to build China into a stronger country and rejuvenate the Chinese nation on all fronts by pursuing Chinese modernization, Xi said in Beijing on Tuesday, as he marked 130 years since Mao's birth. According to Bloomberg, shares rose across Asia after gains on Wall Street pushed the SP500 near its record high, as investors bet that the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates as early as March. The MSCI Asia Pacific Index jumped as much as 0.9%, set for the highest close in over four months. Australia's SP, ASX 200 Index hit its highest intraday peak since April 2022, fueled by gains in miners amid rising iron ore prices, as markets reopen after a long weekend. According to Bloomberg, Bank of Japan board members discussed the potential timing of ending the negative rate policy during their meeting last week, with several members indicating they see no rush to make the move. It would not be too late even if the bank makes a decision after it sees developments in labor management wage negotiations next spring, one of nine board members said at the December 18-19 gathering. There is only a small risk of underlying inflation overshooting its 2% target by a significant degree, the same member said. According to Bloomberg, China's industrial profits soared in November helped by favorable year-ago comparisons and a raft of stimulus measures aimed at reinvigorating an economy that has struggled with deflationary concerns. Profits jumped 29.5% from a year earlier, sharply accelerating from the previous month, according to official data published Wednesday. Companies also recorded large investment returns in November, further boosting their bottom line, the National Bureau of Statistics said. According to Reuters, Russia will soon deploy its newest howitzers to its northern military district which borders Finland and Norway, the head of the Rostec state defense conglomerate said in remarks published on Wednesday. The testing of the new coalition SV self-propelled artillery units has been completed and their mass production has already started, Sergei Chemizov, the head of Rostec told the state RIA news agency in an interview. According to Bloomberg, U.S. strikes on targets in Iraq and fresh attacks by Houthi militants on shipping in the Red Sea provided the latest warning signs that the war in Gaza risks expanding into a wider conflict destabilizing the Middle East. The Pentagon said late Monday that its forces launched strikes on three installations in Iraq linked to Qatayb Hezbollah. Washington said the Iraqi insurgent group that's backed by Iran was behind an attack that injured three U.S. personnel, leaving one in critical condition. According to Reuters, Aston Villa manager Anai Emery said his side lost an amazing opportunity to seize all three points against Manchester United after the Midlands club surrendered a two-goal lead in the Premier League on Tuesday. Villa suffered their first defeat in 11 games in all competitions as sixth-placed United came back from behind to win 3-2 at Old Trafford. According to Bloomberg, Argentina's president Javier Millet is considering issuing a perpetual bond to pay a $16 billion lawsuit award to Burford Capital stemming from the nationalization of state-run energy company YPF. Swinging between political jabs and policy intentions, Millet suggested that the government would issue the bond without a fixed maturity while charging Argentines the Kachilov tax, named after Buenos Aires governor Axel Kachilov who was the economy minister when the YPF lawsuit started. According to Reuters, Toyota Motors' global production jumped 11% in November to a record level, bouncing back from last year's supply chain disruptions and benefiting from robust demand both in Japan and overseas. Output for November climbed to 926,573 vehicles, while worldwide sales increased 14% from a year earlier when automakers globally were bedeviled by shortages of semiconductors. Both figures include Toyota's Lexus luxury brand. According to Bloomberg, oil held its largest gain in more than a week on rising tensions in the Middle East, with a fresh attack on shipping in the Red Sea prompting vessels to avoid the key shipping route. West Texas Intermediate traded above $75 a barrel after rising by 2.7% on Tuesday, with global benchmark Brent near $81. The vessel MSC United 8 was attacked while en route to Pakistan from Saudi Arabia despite the U.S. and a number of other nations forming a maritime task force to deter such strikes. According to Bloomberg, 
Just nine months after buying their first property in Dubai, Dina Habib and Karim Youssef are already planning their next move within the city. The Egyptian couple, who spent eight years renting in the Emirate, are selling their two-bedroom apartment in the Jumeirah Village Circle District on the edge of Dubai for a 26% premium over the 1.7 million dirhams they paid for the property in March. Habib is hoping to secure a larger property for her family of three for the same price or less. According to Reuters, China's foreign ministry said it had sanctioned Caron, a U.S. firm founded by former Treasury Department officials that provides data to companies on alleged forced labor in the Xinjiang region to help them comply with U.S. laws. The foreign ministry said on Tuesday it would take countermeasures against Caron and its director of investigations for providing so-called evidence for America's illegal sanctions related to Xinjiang. According to Reuters, Japanese government bond yields fell on Wednesday as investors failed to see signs of a shift in the Bank of Japan's policy from a summary of opinions at this month's meeting. The 10-year JGB yield fell 2.5 basis points to 0.605%. The 20-year yield fell 2 bits per second to 1.350%. According to Bloomberg, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi discussed the situation in the Middle East including recent attacks on shipping in the Red Sea, with Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince and Prime Minister Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. We exchanged views on the West Asia situation and shared concerns regarding terrorism, violence and the loss of civilian lives, Modi said in a post on X. He also reiterated India's long-standing and principled position on the Israel-Palestine issue and called for continued humanitarian aid for the affected population, according to an India readout of the conversation. According to Reuters, Asian stocks rose broadly on Wednesday, tracking a rally from Wall Street as investors latched on to the year-end optimism driven by expectations that the Federal Reserve could begin cutting rates as early as next March. As traders wind down with few critical economic data releases scheduled between now and the end of the month, the market mood continues to be dominated by the prospect that major central banks globally could begin easing rates in 2024, with the Fed taking the lead. According to Reuters, Chinese electric vehicle giant BYD said on Wednesday it has obtained a conditional testing license for Level 3 autonomous driving on high-speed roads. BYD was granted the first such license in China in July, the company said in a statement on its official Weibo account. According to Bloomberg, Turkey moved closer to approving Sweden's long-awaited accession to NATO with a key parliamentary committee backing the bid, paving the way for a vote by the full assembly in Ankara as early as this week. Turkey's Foreign Affairs Committee endorsed Sweden's entry to the military alliance, clearing one of the final hurdles for Stockholm. The parliament is widely expected to follow suit when it votes, with President Recep Tayyip Erdogan signaling he's in favor and his ruling AK party and its allies having a comfortable majority in the chamber. According to Bloomberg, Bitcoin held a retreat as traders assessed how crypto markets might react if regulators meet expectations by approving the first U.S. exchange-traded funds investing directly in the token. The largest digital asset shed 2.4% over the past 24 hours and traded at $42,400 as of 10.31 a.m. Wednesday in Singapore. Bitcoin is up 156% this year, a rally driven partly by wagers that the ETFs will encourage fresh demand. According to Reuters, one person was killed after Russian forces sent dozens of attack drones over Ukraine in their latest overnight airstrike, Ukrainian authorities said on Wednesday. The Ukraine Air Force said that 32 of 46 Iranian-made drones launched by Russia had been shot down. Most of the rest struck near the front line, mainly in the southern Kherson region. According to Reuters, self-driving cars could be on some British roads by 2026, the country's transport minister Mark Harper said on Wednesday. Cars with full self-driving technology are not currently permitted on Britain's roads but the government's automated vehicles legislation is going through Parliament, meaning that a legal framework for them should be in place by the end of 2024, said Harper. According to Reuters, Hong Kong's New World Development and Chinese state-backed China Resources Land said they will jointly build a $1.3 billion housing project in the financial city's northern metropolis next year. In a joint statement on Wednesday, 
The two developers said the project will create around 1,800 homes in the Hong Kong government-led property development on the border with China. According to Reuters, European shares advanced on Wednesday as robust China data lifted miners, while tech stocks benefited from an overnight rally on Wall Street amid persisting optimism the Federal Reserve could begin cutting rates as early as next March. The pan-European stock 600 gained 0.2% as of 0920 GMT, following an over 0.4% increase in major Wall Street indexes overnight. N. According to Bloomberg, rice prices surged to a fresh 15-year high, fueled by strong demand and lingering supply concerns. Thai white rice 5% broken. An Asian benchmark climbed for a third straight week to reach $659 a ton on Wednesday according to the Thai Rice Exporters Association. That's the highest since October 2008 and brings the increase in prices to about 38% this year, after top shipper India restricted exports and dry weather threatened production. According to Reuters, U.S. sanctions targeting Russia's massive Arctic LNG2 project are unacceptable and undermine global energy security, the Russian Foreign Ministry's spokeswoman said on Wednesday. Spokeswoman Maria Zaharova also said cooperation between Russia and China, whose companies are stakeholders in the liquefied natural gas project, would continue to strengthen, including in the energy sphere. According to Reuters, Shanghai's International Energy Exchange has adjusted trading requirements for its container shipping index for a second time within a week as prices jumped following attacks on vessels in the Red Sea. INE's most traded April container shipping index European line futures soared 20% to 1,744.9 index points on Wednesday. According to Reuters, Germany's software AG has invited competitors and investors to submit bids for two software platforms and is looking at options for a third one, the Handelsblatt Daily reported on Wednesday, citing sources familiar with the talks. Software AG which is majority owned by private equity firm Silver Lake, is looking for interested parties for its trend miner and cumulosity platforms, according to Handelsblatt. According to Reuters, world stocks rallied to their highest levels since late 2022 on Wednesday, with year-end optimism high on hopes that major central banks such as the U.S. Federal Reserve will start cutting interest rates early next year. U.S. stock futures were flat a day after the SP500 touched its highest intraday level since January 2022. European shares were a touch higher, with trade generally subdued given public holidays across the region on Monday and Tuesday. According to Bloomberg, Russia's biggest liquefied natural gas producer began production at its Arctic LNG2 project, despite U.S. sanctions, in a move that could provide some relief to the tight global market for the fuel. The first train of the Novodik PJSC-led Arctic LNG2 project has actually started operating, Russia's Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak said in an interview with state-run Rossiya 24 TV channel on Wednesday. We're expecting the first shipments from this project in the first quarter of next year. According to Reuters, Eurozone government bond yields fell to multi-month lows on Wednesday as investors returned from the holiday break and upped bets that interest rates will fall sharply next year. Germany's 10-year yield, the benchmark for the Eurozone, was down 4 basis points at 1.931%. The yield, which moves inversely to the price, fell to its lowest since March earlier in the session at 1.931%. According to Bloomberg, more than a decade after regulators vowed to tame the risks of too big to fail banks, White House officials were on a call. Why? One attendee asked, was JP Morgan Chase Company allowed to buy First Republic Bank that morning in a government led auction? The answer came, flatly, from Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. They had the highest bid. According to Reuters, the pound was little changed in subdued trading on Wednesday but remained on track to be one of the best performing currencies in 2023. Sterling was last down 0.06% at $1.2716, off a four-month high of $1.279 touched earlier in December. According to Yahoo Finance, nay, for more expert insight and the latest market action, click here to watch this full episode of Yahoo Finance Live. 
Thumbnail URL, https colon slash slash s dot yimg dot com slash u slash appy slash res slash one dot two slash nine glibrox one v zero jdobmenep six g dash dash tilde b slash add zero yote five o three c nine ente five mdt hchb pzd fifteen dgf jalving dash dash slash https colon slash slash s dot image dot com slash o slash creator dash uploaded dash images slash twenty twenty three 3-12-1C 72B860-9875-11E-BFFF-2 145781 BA00 Duration, PT8M Content URL https colon slash slash video dot media dot yql dot yahoo dot com slash v1 slash video slash sappy slash whole streams slash 12 f 0 d 6 b 5 dash 4 7 4 c dash 3 b 0 1 dash b 5 e 7 dash 8 4 9 a 30 b 4 d 76 e dot m 3 u 8 question mark site equals finance and region equals us and lang equals n dash us and dev type equals desktop and src equals sappy embed earl https colon slash slash finance dot yahoo dot com slash video slash twitter dash becomes dash x dash yahoo dash finances dash two two three seven two nineteen twenty two dot html question mark format equals embed identifier 12 f 0 d 6 b 5 474 c 3 b 01 b 5 e 7 849 a 30 b 4 d 76 e according to reuters Tesla is expected to post another record quarter for electric vehicle deliveries, likely shy of an ambitious 2 million annual internal target that CEO Elon Musk touted at the beginning of the year. Faced with slowing sales, Tesla leveraged its industry-leading margins and slashed prices of its four car models globally in 2023, with a focus on China, where the company has lost market share to locals including BYD. According to Reuters, the traditional turbulence of money markets at year's end could pose a first test for a new and so far largely unused central bank liquidity facility, but a shift to full-scale activity likely still lies some time off into next year. Some market participants reckon that the Fed's standing repo facility, which it formally adopted in 2021, may see some noticeable usage over the turn of the year as traders and investors manage their money during a predictably volatile period. If that happens, it would not be a sign of distress, but of the financial plumbing system working as intended. According to Reuters, the legal landscape surrounding abortion has been roiled by uncertainty since the U.S. Supreme Court last year overturned its landmark 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling, which had guaranteed abortion rights nationwide. Abortion providers and reproductive rights groups have brought a slew of lawsuits seeking to invalidate new bans and abortion restrictions that went into effect in many Republican-led states after Roe fell, invoking women's rights under state constitutions. The cases often resulted in preliminary victories followed by whiplash reversals on appeal, leaving providers and patients in limbo. According to Reuters, as bonds emerge from a historic sell-off, some investors expect better times in the U.S. fixed income market next year, as long as the Federal Reserve's rate cuts play out as anticipated. A fourth quarter rally saved bonds from an unprecedented third straight annual loss in 2023, following the worst ever decline a year earlier. The late year surge came after Treasuries hit their lowest level since 2007 in October. According to Reuters, Walt Disney production company Lucasfilm is suing a themed car wash on the outskirts of Chilean capital Santiago for plagiarizing its multi billion dollar galactic film and television saga, Star Wars, lawyers for the car wash said. Star Wash has shared videos on social media showing attendants dressed as Star Wars, characters such as Chewbacca or a stormtrooper wiping down hoods, bounty hunter Boba Fett and hero Cassian Andor wielding hosepipes instead of blasters and Darth Vader appearing to use the force to summon cleaning cloths. According to Bloomberg, Wall Street's affair with blank check firms, the finance fad that pushed companies onto the stock market during the COVID-19 pandemic, ended this year with a string of big bankruptcies and even bigger losses for shareholders. At least 21 firms that went public by merging with special purpose acquisition companies, or SPACs, went bankrupt this year, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Measured from their peak market capitalizations, the insolvencies bookend the loss of more than $46 billion of total equity value. According to Bloomberg, 
the soft landing scenario that investors see for next year points to further gains in U.S. stocks. But it also dims the prospect of another stretch of wild out performance for the technology giants that dominated in 2023. One of the key themes behind the magnificent 7 surge, which generated nearly two thirds of the SP500 index's advance this year, appears to have faded in importance for investors. With recession fears swirling, the tech behemoth's earnings growth, combined with robust cash flow and balance sheets, made them haven stocks. According to Bloomberg, Crypto hedge funds that survived a bruising 2022 are recovering, and many are thriving. Some are even expecting a banner 2024. Take Dan Moorhead's Pantera Capital, one of the industry's oldest and biggest funds. The firm's liquid token fund was up nearly 80% this year as of mid-December, after falling 80% in 2022, according to a person familiar with the performance. Chainview Capital, the crypto hedge fund run by 31-year-old Dan Slavin, has doubled after an 18% decline last year, Slavin said. According to Reuters, standing at 6 feet 2 inches tall and weighing 300 pounds, NASA's humanoid robot Valkyrie is an imposing figure. Valkyrie, named after a female figure in Norse mythology and being tested at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, is designed to operate in degraded or damaged human-engineered environments, like areas hit by natural disasters, according to NASA. According to Bloomberg, shipping giant Haypag Lloyd AG said it will keep its vessels away from the Red Sea even after the launch of a U.S.-led task force to protect the key route from militant attacks. The container liner said it will continue to reroute its vessels via the Cape of Good Hope, a detour of several thousand miles. It follows a spate of attacks on merchant ships, by Yemeni rebels acting in support of the Palestinians, on a route that handles about 12% of global trade. According to Reuters, futures tied to Wall Street's main indexes were subdued on Wednesday after the SP500 rose close to its all-time high in the previous session on growing expectations that the Federal Reserve would cut interest rates as early as March. Pre-market trading volumes were low, with most participants away on year-end holidays and due to a lack of any strong cues, except the weekly jobless claims data expected on Thursday. According to Reuters, Germany's 10-year bond yield the benchmark for the eurozone fell to its lowest level in a year on Wednesday as investors returned from the holiday break and upped bets that interest rates will fall sharply next year. According to Reuters, Denmark's Maersk said on Wednesday it has scheduled several dozen container vessels to travel via the Suez Canal and the Red Sea in the next several weeks, after pausing voyages in the area earlier this month due to the risk of attacks. The schedule remains subject to change based on specific contingency plans that may be formed over the coming days, the company added. According to Reuters, China will strive to expand domestic demand, ensure a speedy economic recovery and promote stable growth, according to an interim report on China's 14th five-year plan published by Parliament on Wednesday. The country will prioritize the restoration and expansion of consumption, stabilize bulk consumption and promote consumption of services, Zheng Shanji, head of the state economic planning body, was quoted as saying at a meeting held on Tuesday. According to Reuters, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has placed a clinical hold on iAvance Biotherapeutics lung cancer therapy trial after a patient death, the company said on Wednesday. Shares of the company were down 26.9% in pre-market trading. According to Reuters, Next decade said Total Energies has offered to sell a 17.5% stake in the U.S. liquefied natural gas company. The offering by a unit of French oil major Total Energies includes 44.9 million shares of next decade, the company said in a filing dated December 22. According to Reuters, drug developer Cytokinetics said on Wednesday its experimental drug Efecamten to treat a type of chronic heart disease, had met the main goal of a keenly awaited late-stage study. The San Francisco-based company's shares rose over 40% in pre-market hours. According to Bloomberg, Bitcoin recovered amid renewed speculation that the U.S. securities regulator is getting close to approving an exchange-traded fund investing directly in the biggest token. Bitcoin advanced as much as 2.1% and traded around $43,000 as of 12.10 p.m. in London, rebounding from Tuesday's drop. Other major cryptocurrencies also gained. Bitcoin Cash, 
one of the early offshoots of the original digital currency, rallied as much as 14% after investors piled into an investment vehicle tracking the token. According to Yahoo Finance, seen as an also-ran chip player throughout 2022 and the first half of 2023, Intel has suddenly programmed itself back into the good graces of Mr. Market. Intel's stock is up 13% in December compared to a 4.5% gain for the SP500, according to Yahoo Finance data. The company's chief rival NVIDIA has seen its stock cool a bit after a blistering year, logging a 5.3% advance on the month, while AMD shares have jumped 18%. According to Bloomberg, a subsidiary of troubled landlord Adler Group SA, significantly overstated the value of stale debts in its 2021 accounts, according to German financial watchdog BA Finn. In its approved financial statements, Adler Real Estate AG should have cut the valuation of a receivable link to the sale of shares in Accentro Real Estate AG in 2017, the regulator said Wednesday. Adler sold the shares in the company to a partnership advised by the firm of an Azeri businessman, but was still waiting to recover much of the money on the date the accounts were filed. According to Reuters, Pipeline operator Williams said on Wednesday it would buy a portfolio of natural gas storage assets from an affiliate of Hartree Partners LP for $1.95 billion, to cater to rising demand from liquefied natural gas projects. The deal, expected to close in January 2024, includes six underground natural gas storage facilities with total capacity of 115 billion cubic feet in the U.S. states of Louisiana and Mississippi. According to Reuters, British shopper numbers at stores on Boxing Day rose from a year earlier, especially in London, research data showed on Wednesday, marking a strong start to the post-Christmas bargain hunting spree. Research group MRI Software said footfall rose 4% across all UK retail destinations on December 26. According to Reuters, the New York Times sued OpenAI and Microsoft on Wednesday accusing them of using millions of the newspaper's articles without permission to help train artificial intelligence technologies. The Times said it is the first major U.S. media organization to sue OpenAI and Microsoft, which created ChatGPT and other AI platforms, over copyright issues. According to Reuters, two U.S. senators have written to Elon Musk, Tesla's top executive, calling on him to, swiftly, recall any steering and suspension parts that pose a safety risk. The letter cites, an alarming, Reuters investigation published on December 20 that exposed how Tesla has blamed drivers for frequent failures of components it has long known were defective. According to Bloomberg, the euro rose to its highest against the greenback since the end of July as signals from the Federal Reserve that it will pivot to rate cuts have continued to support a risk rally. The common currency climbed as much as 0.3% to 1.1070 on Wednesday one of the biggest gainers in the group of 10. The euro has advanced 3.4% this year, with much of the rally coming in the past few weeks since the Fed's latest commentary. According to Bloomberg, Brazil's EQI Investimentos, which provides digital brokerage and investment advisory services to some 67,000 clients, is looking to acquire a multifamily office to grow its wealth management business. The firm is interested in buying an established business working with families away from the main state capitals, a similar profile to many of its own clients, who are spread across agriculture-rich states and regional industry hubs, EQI co-founder and chief executive officer Giuliano Custodio said in an interview at his office in Balneario Camburiu, Santa Catarina State. According to Reuters, U.S. banks whose net interest margins have been compressed due to higher funding costs are unlikely to see relief before the end of 2024 even if the Federal Reserve cuts rates, research and data analytics firm SP Global Market Intelligence said on Wednesday. The U.S. Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes have spurred customers into chasing high-yielding alternatives to bank deposits, such as money market funds. According to Yahoo Finance, Stocks were largely unchanged on Wednesday amid a holiday-shortened week of trading as few major catalysts drove the market action. The SP500 neared an all-time high record close of 4,796 on Wednesday. The benchmark average and the Dow Jones Industrial Average hovered just below the flatline on Wednesday while the tech-heavy Nasdaq Composite advanced about 0.2%. According to Bloomberg, 
Cytokinetics Inc. said its experimental drug helped patients with a genetic heart ailment in a closely watched trial that has spurred speculation about a potential takeover. The drug improved exercise capacity and oxygen uptake in patients with the heart condition, compared with those getting a placebo, Cytokinetics said Wednesday in a statement. Months before the results were released, the South San Francisco-based company had already attracted interest from at least one major drug maker, Bloomberg reported in October. According to Reuters, solar panel manufacturer First Solar said on Wednesday it plans to sell up to $700 million in tax credits it accumulated through the sale of photovoltaic solar modules this year to payments firm Fiserv. First Solar is one of the companies eligible for the tax credits for producing clean energy components under the new guidelines for the Inflation Reduction Act. According to Reuters, Software firm MicroStrategy said on Wednesday it had bought Bitcoin worth about $615.7 million in cash, amid growing expectations that the top U.S. markets regulator will soon approve a spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund. The company and its subsidiaries purchased about 14,620 Bitcoins at an average price of roughly $42,110 between November 30 and December 26, according to a regulatory filing. According to Reuters, Canada's main stock index was on track for a three-day winning streak on Wednesday, led by gains in energy and healthcare stocks, while investors grew optimistic that major central banks could begin cutting interest rates in the upcoming year. At 10.08 a.m. Eastern Time, the Toronto Stock Exchange's SP-TSX Composite Index was up 128.69 points, or 0.62%, at 21,009.88, hovering at 18-month high levels. According to Reuters, U.S. stocks edged higher on Wednesday, with the SP500 inching closer to its all-time high on prospects of early interest rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. The benchmark index is within a whisker of breaching its record close touched in January 2022 and on track to post its biggest quarterly gain in three years. According to Bloomberg, Genoa Capital, a Brazilian hedge fund with $3.8 billion in assets under management, says it's time to bet on the nation's currency and stocks as the central bank's cautious approach to interest rate cuts diminishes the appeal of local rates. While the Brazilian real is one of the best-performing major currencies this year, trailing only the Mexican peso, its fair price is closer to 4.5 than 5 reais per dollar, according to Igor Velichiko, a partner and chief economist at Genoa. That's about 6.8% stronger than the 4.83 per dollar the currency is trading at. According to Reuters, Ukraine's government faces the prospect of delaying pensions and salaries for public servants if crucial Western financial aid is not approved soon, Deputy Prime Minister Yulia Severidenko told the Financial Times on Wednesday. Kyiv has poured all its revenue into defense since Russia's February 2022 invasion, relying on foreign support to cover everything from pensions to social payments. According to Bloomberg, Billionaire Xavier Neal has expressed interest in buying the Portuguese operations of Patrick Drahi's Altus Telecommunications Empire, according to people with knowledge of the matter, joining a Saudi phone company and private equity firms in the contest. Drahi will winnow the bidders to a short list early in the new year, said one of the people, all of whom asked not to be identified because the process is confidential. Representatives for Altus and Iliad, Neal's French telecom company, declined to comment. According to Yahoo Finance, this was yet another year to forget for much of Wall Street. Dealmaking slowed. Thousands of jobs were cut. Bonuses were slashed. According to Reuters, India has launched an investigation into how 303 Indians ended up on a chartered flight that was grounded in France last week because of suspected human trafficking, authorities in the western Indian state of Gujarat said on Wednesday. Tipped off by an anonymous informant, French authorities on Friday prevented the plane from flying to its listed destination of Nicaragua from a refueling stopover at Vitry Airport in northeastern France. It had taken off from the United Arab Emirates with 11 unaccompanied minors among the passengers, 276 of whom returned to India on Tuesday. According to Yahoo Finance, as AI took center stage in 2023, there was no sector in which the stakes were higher than in healthcare. While the industry is no stranger to AI, especially in drug development and medical imaging, there are many ways in which the mainstream awareness of OpenAI's chat GPT has pushed the discussion further than ever. 
According to Reuters, Apple scored a victory on Wednesday as a U.S. appeals court paused a government commission's import ban on some of its popular Apple smartwatches following a patent dispute with medical technology firm Massimo. The tech giant had filed an emergency request for the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit to halt the order after appealing the U.S. International Trade Commission's decision that it had infringed Massimo's patents. According to Bloomberg, Italy won't need to change its budget plans for next year to meet the new European Union rules just agreed by the bloc, according to the country's finance chief. Our forecasts are coherent with the new European fiscal rules so there's no need for additional budget updates, Finance Minister Giancarlo Giorgetta told lawmakers in Rome on Wednesday. According to Bloomberg, iAvance Biotherapeutics Inc. fell the most in more than a year after U.S. regulators paused a study of its lung cancer drug following a patient death. The Food and Drug Administration told iAvance to stop the trial after a death potentially related to a process that cancer patients must complete before receiving cellular therapies, the company said Wednesday in a statement. Called lymphodepletion, the process involves weakening the immune system. According to Bloomberg, the New York Times company sued Microsoft Corp. and OpenAI Inc. for using its content to help develop artificial intelligence services, in a sign of the increasingly fraught relationship between the media and a technology that could upend the news industry. The technology firms relied on millions of copyrighted articles to train chatbots like ChatGPT and other AI features, allegedly causing billions of dollars in statutory and actual damages, according to a lawsuit filed in New York on Wednesday. The Times didn't specify its monetary demands. According to Bloomberg, European equities were little changed, hovering near their highest level since January 2022, as trading resumed in the region following the Christmas break. The stock's 600 index was less than 0.1% higher by 8.07 a.m. in London, with energy and mining stocks leading gains. AstraZeneca PLC rose after the British drug giant agreed to acquire Chinese cell therapy developer Grissel Biotechnologies Inc. German chemical giant Bayer AG gained after it won a trial in a U.S. lawsuit related to its Roundup herbicide. According to Reuters, Turkey's monthly minimum wage will be 17,002 Turkish lira in 2024, Labor Minister Vedat Isakhan said on Wednesday marking a 49% increase from the level determined in July and a 100% hike from January. Turkey's annual inflation rate edged up to 61.98% in November, its highest level this year but just shy of expectations, signaling that an aggressive rate hiking cycle may be beginning to cool demand. According to Bloomberg, at about 1 a.m. California time in 2013, a scientist emailed Apple Inc. Chief Executive Officer Tim Cook with an irresistible pitch. I strongly believe that we can develop the new wave of technology that will make Apple the number one brand in the medical, fitness and wellness market, he wrote in the email, which was later included in legal documents. Some 10 hours after the message was sent, an Apple recruiter was in touch. And just weeks after that, the engineer was working at the tech company on a smartwatch with health sensors. According to Bloomberg, Apple Inc. won a ruling temporarily pausing a U.S. International Trade Commission order banning sales of some of its smartwatches in the U.S. while the company seeks a longer stay pending its appeal of the restriction. An appellate court in Washington issued the interim stay Wednesday a day after Apple sought the delay. It gave the commission until January 10 to respond to Apple's request for a longer stay during the court challenge. According to Reuters, Poland's culture minister has decided to put the country's state television, radio and news agency into liquidation, he said on Wednesday. His move follows a decision by President Andrzej Duda to veto the new government's spending proposals for public media financing. According to Bloomberg, Turkey will raise the minimum wage by 49% in the new year to take some of the pressure off living costs before local elections in a country where inflation is on track to surpass 70% in the months ahead. The monthly net minimum salary will be set at 17,002 liras, Labor Minister Vedat Isakhan said in a televised press conference in Ankara. That compares with an increase of more than 100% this year, delivered in two adjustments that contributed to faster price growth and pushed up the cost of labor. We fulfilled our promise not to allow our workers to be crushed by inflation, the minister said. According to Yahoo Finance, 
Maybe Nvidia's stock isn't grossly overvalued after a sizzling 237% gain this year, given the arms race to unleash new AI superpowers on the world. I think there is a chance for it to become the world's most valuable company to happen, veteran tech analyst Paul Meeks said on Yahoo Finance Live. You think about it, it's going to have to increase its market cap at least 100% from here. I think it could happen, but I would not be bold enough to make that claim yet. According to Yahoo Finance, rumors of a refreshed Tesla Model Y have been percolating for months, but electric vehicle buyers may finally have that option later next year. According to Bloomberg, Tesla is prepping a revamped Model Y to be built from its Giga Shanghai plant. The preparations for the updated Model Y will require Giga Shanghai to suspend production for around a week during China's New Year holiday, which starts in late January, and then again later next year prior to mass production which could occur as soon as mid-2024. According to Bloomberg, Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk's cabinet placed public television and radio under liquidation after the president vetoed legislation providing subsidies to the state-run media amid a political standoff over the broadcasters. Culture Minister Bartłomiej Sienkiewicz said on Wednesday that Telewizja Polska SA, Polski Radio SA and news agency Polska Agencja Prasowa SA have been disbanded after a suspension in financing due to President Andrzej Duda's veto. The liquidation status will help to efficiently restructure public media and avoid layoffs amid a lack of public funding, the ministry said. According to Bloomberg, the NBA approved investor Miriam Adelson's purchase of a majority stake in the Dallas Mavericks from entrepreneur Mark Cuban. The $3.5 billion deal won clearance Wednesday from the Basketball League's Board of Governors, according to a statement. Cuban will keep a minority stake. According to Reuters, Brazil's federal public debt saw a 2.48% surge in November, marked by both domestic issuances and the government's first sustainable bonds in the international market, the Treasury said on Wednesday. This increase propelled the total debt stock to 6.325 trillion reais, but still below the lower limit of the Treasury's targeted range of 6.4 to 6.8 trillion reais for the year. According to Bloomberg, the Federal Reserve's continued push to remove liquidity from the financial system is bringing back volatility to year-end trading in the overnight funding markets for the first time in five years. Volatility in the market for overnight repurchase agreements is generally tame, but it has started to move, with repos trading first at 5.50% and then retreating to 5.36% minus 5.34% on Tuesday, according to Clear Street LLC. The last time the repo market moved at all around year-end was in 2018, when it spiked more than 3 percentage points to 6%. According to Bloomberg, U.S. bonds rallied, with yields on benchmark debt falling more than 10 basis points on the day, after strong demand for a sale of five-year securities boosted investor confidence. The 10-year Treasury yielded 3.79% following the $58 billion sale, which sold at 3.801%, the lowest rate since May, after trading at 3.815% prior to the auction. The result was an indication that appetite exceeded dealer expectations. According to Reuters, amidst the euphoria of Manchester United's stunning 3-2 comeback victory over Aston Villa on Tuesday, one figure sat calmly in the Old Trafford stands processing what had just occurred. A sizable majority of supporters in the stadium might not even have recognized Dave Brailsford. But over the coming months he is likely to become a familiar figure. According to Bloomberg, U.S. employers expect to hire less in 2024, according to several regional Federal Reserve Bank surveys, a trend that's set to limit wage gains and cool inflation pressures. The results precede the government's monthly jobs report next week, forecast to show a 170,000 gain in December payrolls. Meanwhile, Economists expect an average 80,000 monthly increase in the first three months of next year, about half this quarter's pace. According to Reuters, a U.S. judge on Wednesday rejected Alibaba's bid to dismiss a lawsuit over the alleged sale by various merchants of counterfeit versions of the popular children's toy Squishmallows on its online platforms. U.S. District Judge Jesse Furman in Manhattan said Kelly Toys, whose parent Jazzwares is owned by billionaire Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, plausibly alleged that Alibaba knew about and contributed to the merchant's infringement of its copyrights and trademarks. 
According to Reuters, a measure of the cost of borrowing short-term funds backed by U.S. Treasuries spiked this week to its highest since 2019, a move some market participants attributed to dealers closing their balance sheets for the year. The DTCC-GCF Treasury Repo Index, which tracks the average daily interest rate paid for the most traded general collateral finance repo contracts for U.S. Treasuries, jumped to 5.452% on Tuesday from 5.395% last week. That is the highest level since September 2019, when dwindling bank reserves sent the cost of overnight loans as high as 10%, forcing the Federal Reserve to intervene. According to Reuters, an employee of Canadian oil and gas company Vermilion Energy paid the securities regulator C$400,000, more than double the profit made by insider trading, the Alberta Securities Commission said on Wednesday. Bejot Hagshinas, who was a senior reservoir specialist for Vermilion, admitted to illegal insider trading in the shares of oil and gas producer Lucrata Exploration before its acquisition by Vermilion, according to the ASC. According to Reuters, the U.S. will provide up to $250 million in arms and equipment to Ukraine in the final package of aid this year to help Kyiv in its war with Russia, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said on Wednesday. President Joe Biden has asked Congress to provide another $61 billion in aid to Ukraine, but Republicans are refusing to approve the assistance without an agreement with Democrats to tighten security along the U.S.-Mexico border. According to Reuters, the U.S. Federal Trade Commission said on Wednesday it has filed a lawsuit against Grand Canyon University for deceptive advertising and illegal telemarketing. The FTC filed the complaint in a federal court against Grand Canyon Education Inc., its CEO Brian Muller and Grand Canyon University, according to a statement from the commission. According to Bloomberg, Regeneron Pharmaceuticals Inc. rose the most since August after a court ruled that the drugmaker's patent rights were infringed by a cheaper copy of its eye drug developed by Viatris Inc. The Viatris copy violates a Regeneron patent on its eyelay medication, according to the ruling Wednesday from the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of West Virginia. Regeneron shares rose as much as 5.9% in New York, the most intraday since August 3, while Viatris was little changed. According to Reuters, a U.S. appeals court on Wednesday temporarily paused a ruling that had restricted imports of Apple's popular Apple Watches into the United States. Here is a look at what the case means for consumers and what is next for Apple. According to Bloomberg, a wind farm and transmission line billed as the largest clean energy project in U.S. history has secured $11 billion in financing and started construction. Pattern Energy Group LP said Wednesday it closed on financing that includes about $8.8 billion in construction and term facilities and $2.25 billion in tax equity for the 3.5-gigawatt Sun Zia wind farm in New Mexico and 550-mile transmission line carrying electricity to Arizona. Pattern was bought by the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board in 2020. According to Reuters, Chilean lithium miner SQM and state-run Codelco have reached a memorandum of understanding to form a government-controlled partnership for the future production of the key rechargeable battery metal, the firm said on Wednesday. The two companies agreed to form a new company in which Codelco will have a majority stake and which will begin a first phase of operations in January 2025, the companies said in statements. According to Reuters, Wang He Chan scored twice to lead Wolverhampton Wanderers to a 4-1 Premier League victory over Brentford on Wednesday in an end-to-end -end mid table clash that featured four goals in the opening half hour. Gary O'Neill's Wolves, who netted three goals in a league game for the first time this season, moved to 11th in the Premier League table on 25 points. Brentford are 15th on 19 points, four points clear of the drop zone. According to Bloomberg, maybe now more so than ever, the investment strategy of loading up on pick and shovel makers during the middle of a gold rush is playing out in the cryptocurrency world. Shares of Bitcoin miners such as Marathon Digital Holdings and Riot Platforms are significantly outperforming the largest digital currency, posting gains this year of more than 800% and 400%, respectively. Meanwhile, the US crypto exchange Coinbase Global and Bitcoin Proxy MicroStrategy have each jumped more than 350% during the same time period. Bitcoin is up around 160% in 2023. According to Bloomberg, 
SQM said it's reached a memorandum of understanding with Chile's state-owned miner Codelco for the development of Solar de Atacama operations for 2025 to 2060, according to a filing. The agreement is for future development of high-quality lithium products in Solar de Atacama through a company. According to Reuters, Israeli forces pounded central Gaza by land, sea and air and Palestinian authorities reported dozens more deaths, with the UN Health Agency saying thousands of people were trying to flee the fighting. Israel remains resolved to wipe out the Palestinian militant group Hamas in response to the militant group's October 7 attack on Israel, despite international calls for a ceasefire and easing of a worsening humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip. According to Bloomberg, Equities in Asia were headed for muted moves early Thursday even as the U.S. equity market inched toward a record high on hopes for Federal Reserve interest rate easing. Futures contracts for Japan and Hong Kong shares edged lower, while those for Australia rose, also nearing a fresh peak. The SP ASX 200 closed Wednesday within 1% of its record high. According to Reuters, General Motors has sued the city of San Francisco seeking to recover more than $100 million, alleging that it was charged a higher tax bill than warranted because its crew's self-driving car unit was improperly used to make the calculations. In the case filed in California Superior Court in San Francisco, GM is seeking $108 million in back taxes over the course of seven years, as well as $13 million in penalties and interest, according to the complaint. The Detroit automaker said San Francisco-based crews is operated separately from GM generates only a minimal amount of sales and should not be used to calculate GM's liabilities in the city where the parent company has a limited presence. According to Yahoo Finance, saving for retirement is getting a little easier in 2024 thanks to the phase in of a handful of provisions stemming from the Secure 2.0 Act, which became law at the end of last year. Here's a roundup of some of the key retirement-related changes to watch out for in the new year and planning-related moves to consider. According to Bloomberg, a split is emerging between some fund managers and strategists about the fate of Japanese bank stocks amid signs the Bank of Japan is getting closer to ending ultra-easy money. Investors have priced in the benefits of future tightening of monetary policy, reducing the appeal of Japanese bank stocks and swinging attention to non-bank financials, real estate and railways, according to Man GLG, a unit of hedge fund Man Group PLC. According to Bloomberg, Oil edged lower after posting the largest drop in two weeks on signs of a U.S. stockpile build coupled with weak technical indicators. West Texas Intermediate traded below $74 a barrel after declining by 1.9% on Wednesday, with Brent crude under $80. The American Petroleum Institute reported nationwide inventories rose by 1.8 million barrels, according to a report seen by Bloomberg, with levels at Cushing also expanding. That's feeding into signs that supply is running ahead of demand as the year-end approaches. According to Bloomberg, Argentine President Javier Malay sent a wide-ranging omnibus reform package to Congress Wednesday, expanding his shock therapy approach beyond economic policy into myriad aspects of government. Spanning hundreds of pages, Malay's state reform package should face pushback in Congress where his party holds a minority and even the biggest coalition wouldn't give him the necessary votes. Measures range from eliminating Argentina's primary elections and charging university tuition to privatizing 41 state-owned companies and strengthening Miley's economic policy powers throughout his term. According to Bloomberg, Japan's factory output fell in November for the first time in three months while retail sales grew more than expected, data that point to the patchy nature of the economy's recovery from its deepest contraction since the pandemic over the summer quarter. Industrial production decreased 0.9% from October, the industry ministry said Thursday. Economists had forecast a 1.6% drop. Output also fell 1.4% from a year earlier, compared with analysts' consensus of a 2.1% decline. A separate report showed retail sales rose 1% from October, around twice the figure projected by analysts. According to Reuters, Asian shares touched five-month highs on Thursday as market wagers on ever more aggressive rate cuts extended a huge rally in U.S. stocks and bonds, but also left plenty of scope for disappointment next year. The SP500 has climbed 14% in just two months to within a whisker of its all-time closing peak, 
while its price-to-earnings ratio is up by a quarter on the year at 24.0. According to Bloomberg, JD.com Inc. plans sweeping salary increases for its workforce next year, a major move for an e-commerce company struggling with intense competition and uncertain Chinese consumption in 2024. JD, which like Alibaba Group Holding Limited is grappling with hard-charging rivals ByteDance Limited and PDD Holdings Inc., will nearly double the fixed salaries it pays to procurement, sales and other, frontline staff, starting January 1st. JD retail staff will get 20% plus pay hikes on average, the company said in a one-line statement on its official WeChat account. According to Reuters, the dollar nursed steep losses on Thursday and was headed for a yearly decline after two years of strong gains as expectations of interest rate cuts from the Federal Reserve next year grip markets. With the year coming to a close, thin liquidity and limited moves are expected until the new year. According to Reuters, Apple's warnings in October to Indian opposition politicians that government hackers may have hacked their phones prompted Prime Minister Narendra Modi's administration to quickly demand the U.S. firm soften its message, The Washington Post reported. Apple's India representatives were called by administration officials who demanded that company help weaken the political impact of the warnings, the newspaper said citing three unidentified sources. According to Bloomberg, South Korea's semiconductor industry recorded the largest gains in years in both production and shipments, underscoring a revival of technology momentum that bodes well for the nation's economic outlook next year and for the global tech sector. Chip production jumped 42% in November from a year earlier, the most since early 2017, while shipments soared 80%, the biggest gain since late 2002, according to data released Thursday from the National Statistical Office. Inventories expanded by 36% in the smallest rise since February. According to Reuters, oil prices rose in early Asian trade on Thursday as persistent fears over escalating tensions in the Middle East outweighed easing concerns about transport disruptions as some global shipping firms said they were returning to the Red Sea route. Brent crude futures climbed 20 cents, or 0.3%, to $79.85 a barrel by 0133 G.M.T. U.S. WTI crude futures were up 24 cents, or 0.3 percent, at $74.35 a barrel. According to Bloomberg, the world's debt market is on track to post its biggest two-month gain on record as traders ramp up expectations that central banks everywhere will slash interest rates next year. The Bloomberg Global Aggregate Total Return Index has risen nearly 10% over November and December, its best run in Bloomberg data going back to 1990. Jitters around recession risks are percolating across markets, underscoring the case to own bonds, as traders bet policymakers may have to aggressively cut interest rates next year to bolster growth. According to Reuters, China's top copper smelters lowered their first quarter guidance for copper concentrate processing treatment and refining charges as mine closures and disruptions tightened the supply outlook. The rates, decided at a meeting of the China smelters purchase team held on Thursday, were $80 per metric ton and $0.08 cents per pound, three sources with knowledge of the matter said. According to Reuters, Singapore households are bracing for a sales tax hike that takes effect in the new year as the government shores up coffers ahead of an expected surge in social spending in the rapidly aging city-state in the years ahead. The goods and services tax, which is levied on everything from groceries to diamond rings, will be increased by 1 percentage point to 9% on Monday, the second phase of a two-stage rate hike. This year the sales tax was raised to 8% from the previous 7%, which has been unchanged for 15 years. According to Reuters, Toyota Motor's small car unit Daihatsu Motor said on Thursday it would compensate lower-tier contractors in its supply chain to cushion the blow from an indefinite production stoppage after revelations last week of a wider safety scandal. Daihatsu, which had already announced plans to compensate 423 direct suppliers, has said it would keep production halted in Japan at least until the end of January while authorities investigate it for safety inspection irregularities.